I'm gonna be showing you a few tricks. Number one's gonna be to drill an angled hole, and the second one is gonna be using Tornos' ACB technology to machine copper super, super easy. Let's get into it. <laughs> oh, the gas that comes out of this thing. Ugh. All right, first thing we're going over is drilling angled holes and how easy the B-axis is to use on this machine. So you might have noticed that before I drilled the first angled hole, I turned at a different angle than what you see in the finished part. And the reason why I did that is because I want my surface to be perpendicular to my drill. So let me show you. If you have to drill an angled hole in anything, it's kind of hard to do it like this. I mean, I guess you could like force it in like that, but it's not gonna really work that well. It's always easier to drill when you have a perpendicular surface to your drill. Stupid easy, right? So that's exactly why I turned the 75 degree angle to match my 15 degree angle so it'd be exactly perpendicular. After I drill those holes, I come through and I just turn away the material. So on the finished part, you don't even see that I did this. And of course, after you do that, you're gonna roll a burr into your four holes. So you just come in again with the B axis and you pop out those burrs. It's actually super simple. And you'll see as the part progresses, I do this again actually on the second set of angled holes, just a different angle. I do 60 and I do 30. So the drill is perpendicular to the surface it's drilling into. Makes life a lot easier. All right, now I wanna talk about something that Tornos does really, really well. And that's how they touch off their tools in their B axis. On other machines, it can be an absolute nightmare. You, you might have to touch off at zero degrees, you might have to touch off at 90 degrees, and you need to know that as the operator. In order to do angular drilling and have the position be right, you actually have to have your tool sticking out at a specific length. And that is just ridiculous. That's just not how life works. These tools gotta to vary all over the place. Now on this Tornos DT26, look how easy this is. So all you need to do is take your pre-setter and slap it right here on your B-axis, loosen it, slide it down to your tool, take your pre-setter out of the machine, measure it, get your measurement, and then take that and put it in your offset. You don't have to move anything around, you don't have to take any test cuts, you just slap this in there and get your measurement, and you're good to go. Second tip of the video, breaking the chip on copper. So, Tornos makes it really, really easy with their ACB technology. One misconception I see from a lot of people that come into our shop and watch this run is they think it's pecking. It's not actually pecking. It's actually creating an oscillation pattern as the spindle rotates. And what this does is, is every other revolution, it creates an air pocket, which breaks the chip. So with this technology, I can break the chip every single time. Doesn't matter what insert I'm using, what material it is, you can always break the chip. So how does it work? Well, it's actually super simple. It's just a G code. It's G939. Your next variable is A, and A is for activation. One is on, zero is off. Now C is your amplitude. So what is that gonna do and what does that mean? Well, if you look, I have a C1 in this program. Hey Brandon, you look good, bro. Looking good. I have a C1 in this program, which means it's gonna take one and it's gonna multiply it by my feed rate to create the size of the oscillation that it's gonna do to break the chip. The lower you go on these parameters, the easier it is on your machine and the better finish you'll get. If you jack these parameters through the roof, your part's gonna look like crap. The next variable is your E variable. Now that is the direction you're gonna oscillate in. You can oscillate in X or you can oscillate in Z. X is one, Z is two. And because I'm turning in Z, that's why I have a two in there. And that is all you need to know about ACB technology. It's extremely easy and it makes machining materials like copper way easier. To give you an idea how useful ACB technology can be, on the left side you have chips that were ran using ACB, and on the right side you have chips that were ran not using ACB with a drill. So the Kenna Metal drill still did a really good job of breaking the chips, but the ACB took it even further and turned those chips into powder. So that's everything we did to make this part, but we also made an adapter on our GT32. So let's check that out. Pretty much it. Nothing too crazy going on there. Until you combine them, of course. Then you get a deadly torch flame throwing weapon. Just kidding, it's actually not that serious. It's not. All right, that's a bunch of tips and tricks on how to make a copper welding nozzle. Now let's see why they don't use aluminum for these things. Put your guesses down below. How long will this thing last? You good in focus, camera guy? I'm 
I'm guessing 10 to 15 seconds, but it looks like it's doing pretty good. If you haven't checked it out already, go check out CNC Expert. It's a platform made by machinists for machinists. I'll be posting this part on it later today. You can post your work every day, get potential job offers, a whole bunch of cool things. You'd be crazy not to check it out. At what point do you consider this melted? I mean, right? Like, is it already melted now, seeing as it's deforming? Shut up, Trevor. So we probably got done fast forwarding at this point. And now the aluminum has reached a critical melting point. Wow, that is not falling off. Oh, look at that, molten aluminum on plastic. Just gonna step back now, let it do its thing. Probably get this out of the way. All right, that's it for our video today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and don't be stupid, ring that notifications bell. See ya.